The Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis Translated by the Reverend William Benham Book 3, Chapters 11 to 20 Chapter 11 That the desires of the heart are to be examined and governed My son, thou hast still many things to learn which thou hast not well learned yet. What are they, Lord? To place thy desire altogether in subjection to my good pleasure, and not to be a lover of thyself, but an earnest seeker of my will. Thy desires often excite and urge thee forward, but consider with thyself whether thou art not more moved for thine own objects than for my honour. If it is myself that thou seekest, thou shalt be well content with whatsoever I shall ordain. But if any pursuit of thine own lieth hidden within thee, behold, it is this which hindereth and weigheth thee down. Beware, therefore, lest thou strive too earnestly after some desire which thou hast conceived, without taking counsel of me lest haply it repent thee afterwards, and that displease thee which before pleased, and for which thou didst long as for a great good. For not every affection which seemeth good is to be forthwith followed, neither is every opposite affection to be immediately avoided. Sometimes it is expedient to use restraint even in good desires and wishes, lest through importunity thou fall into distraction of mind, lest through want of discipline thou become a stumbling-block to others, or lest by the resistance of others thou be suddenly disturbed and brought to confusion. Sometimes indeed it is needful to use violence, and manfully to strive against the sensual appetite and not to consider what the flesh may or not will, but rather to strive after this, that it may become subject, however unwillingly, to the spirit, and for so long it ought to be chastised and compelled to undergo slavery, even until it be ready for all things, and learn to be contented with little, to be delighted with things simple, and never to murmur at any inconvenience. Chapter 12 Of the Inward Growth of Patience, and of the Struggle Against Evil Desires O Lord God, I see that patience is very necessary unto me, for many things in this life fall out contrary. For howsoever I may have contrived for my peace, my life cannot go on without strife and trouble. Thou speakest truly, my son, for I will not that thou seek such a peace as is without trials, and knoweth no adversities, but rather that thou shouldest judge thyself to have found peace, when thou art tried with manifold tribulations, and proved by many adversities. If thou shalt say that thou art not able to bear such, how then wilt thou sustain the fire hereafter? Of two evils we should always choose the less. Therefore, that thou mayest escape eternal torments hereafter, strive on God's behalf to endure present evils bravely. Thinkest thou that the children of this world suffer naught or but little, Thou wilt not find it so, even though thou find out the most prosperous. But, thou wilt say, they have many delights, and they follow their own wills, and thus they bear lightly their tribulations. Be it so, grant that they have what they list, but how long, thinkest thou, would it last? Behold, like the smoke, those who are rich in this world will pass away, and no record shall remain of their past joys. 
Yea, even while they yet live, they rest not without bitterness and weariness and fear. For from the very same thing wherein they find delight, thence they oftentimes have the punishment of sorrow. Justly it befalleth them, that because out of measure they seek out and pursue pleasures, they enjoy them not without confusion and bitterness. O oh, how short, how false, how inordinate and wicked are all these pleasures! Yet because of their sottishness and blindness, men do not understand. But like brute beasts, for the sake of a little pleasure of this corruptible life, they incur death of the soul. Thou, therefore, my son, go not after thy lusts, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Ecclesiastes 18, verse 30 Delight thou in the Lord, and he shall give thee thy heart's desire. Psalm 37, verse 4 For if thou wilt truly find delight, and be abundantly comforted of me, Behold, in the contempt of all worldly things, and in the avoidance of all worthless pleasures, shall be thy blessing, and fullness of consolation shall be given thee. And the more thou withdrawest thyself from all solace of creatures, the more sweet and powerful consolations thou shalt find, but at the first thou shalt not attain to them without some sorrow and hard striving. Long accustomed habit will oppose, but it shall be overcome by better habit. The flesh will murmur again and again, but will be restrained by fervour of spirit. The old serpent will urge and embitter thee, but will be put to flight by prayer. Moreover, by useful labour, his entrance will be greatly obstructed. Chapter 13 Of the obedience of one in lowly subjection after the example of Jesus Christ. My son, he who striveth to withdraw himself from obedience, withdraweth himself also from grace, and he who seeketh private advantages loseth those which are common unto all. If a man submit not freely and willingly to one set over him, it is a sign that his flesh is not yet perfectly subject to himself, but often resisteth and murmureth. Learn therefore quickly to submit thyself to him who is over thee, if thou seekest to bring thine own flesh into subjection. For the outward enemy is very quickly overcome, if the inner man have not been laid low. There is no more grievous and deadly enemy to the soul than thou art to thyself, if thou art not led by the Spirit. Thou must not altogether conceive contempt for thyself, if thou wilt prevail against flesh and blood, because as yet thou inordinately lovest thyself, therefore thou shrinkest from yielding thyself to the will of others. But what great thing is it, that thou, who art dust and nothingness, yieldest thyself to man for God's sake, when I, the Almighty and the Most High, who created all things out of nothing, subjected myself to man for thy sake. I became the most humble and despised of men, that by my humility thou mightest overcome thy pride. Learn to obey, O dust. Learn to humble thyself, O earth and clay, and to bow thyself beneath the feet of all. Learn to crush thy passions, and to yield thyself to all subjection. Be zealous against thyself, nor suffer pride to live within thee, but to show thyself subject and of no reputation, that all may be able to walk over thee, 
and tread thee down as the clay in the streets. What hast thou, O foolish man, of which to complain? What, O vile sinner, canst thou answer those who speak against thee, seeing thou hast so often offended God, and many a time hast deserved hell? But mine eye hath spared thee, because thy soul was precious in my sight, that thou mightest know my love, and mightest be thankful for my benefits, and that thou mightest give thyself altogether to true subjection and humility, and patiently bear the contempt which thou meritest. Chapter 14 Of Meditation Upon the Hidden Judgments of God, That We May Not Be Lifted Up Because of Our Well-Doing Thou sendest forth thy judgments against me, O Lord, and shakest all my bones with fear and trembling, and my soul trembleth exceedingly. I stand astonished, and remember that the heavens are not clean in thy sight. Job 15, verse 15 If thou chargest thine angels with folly, and did spare them not, then how shall it be unto me? Stars have fallen from heaven, and what shall I dare, who am but dust? They whose works seem to be praiseworthy fell into the lowest depths, and they who did eat angels' food, them have I seen delighted with the husks that the swine do eat. There is therefore no holiness if thou, O Lord, withdraw thine hand. No wisdom profiteth if thou leave off to guide the helm. No strength availeth if thou cease to preserve. No purity is secure if thou protect it not. No self-keeping availeth if thy holy watching be not there. For when we are left alone, we are swallowed up and perish. But when we are visited, we are raised up and we live. How indeed we are unstable, but are made strong through thee. We grow cold, but are rekindled by thee. Oh, how humbly and abjectly must I reckon of myself! How must I weigh it as nothing! if I seem to have nothing good. O oh, how profoundly ought I to submit myself to thy unfathomable judgments, O Lord, when I find myself nothing else save nothing, and again nothing. O oh, weight unmeasurable, O oh, ocean which cannot be crossed over, where I find nothing of myself save nothing altogether. Where then? is the hiding place of glory, where the confidence begotten of virtue. All vainglory is swallowed up in the depths of thy judgments against me. What is all flesh in thy sight? For how shall the clay boast against him that fashioned it? Psalm 29 verse 16 how can he be lifted up in vain speech whose heart is subjected in truth to God? The whole world shall not lift him up whom truth hath subdued, nor shall he be moved by the mouth of all who praise him, who hath placed all his hope in God. For they themselves who speak, behold, they are all nothing." for they shall cease with the sound of their words, but the truth of the Lord endureth for ever. Psalm 117, verse 2 Chapter 15 How we must stand and speak in everything that we desire. My son, Speak thou thus in every matter. Lord, if it please thee, let this come to pass. Lord, if this shall be for thine honour, let it be done in thy name. 
Lord, if thou see it good for me, and approve it as useful, then grant me to use it for thy honour. But if thou knowest that it shall be hurtful unto me, and not profitable for the health of my soul, take the desire away from me. For not every desire is from the Holy Ghost, although it appear to a man right and good. It is difficult to judge with certainty whether a good or an evil spirit move thee to desire this or that, or whether thou art moved by thine own spirit. Many have been deceived in the past who seemed at the beginning to be moved by a good spirit. Therefore whatsoever seemeth to thee desirable, thou must always desire and seek after it with the fear of God and humility of heart, and most of all must altogether resign thyself and commit all unto me, and say, Lord, thou knowest what is best, let this or that be according as thou wilt. Give what thou wilt, so much as thou wilt, when thou wilt. Do with me as thou knowest best, and as best shall please thee, and I shall be most to thine honour. Place me where thou wilt, and freely work thy will with me in all things. I am in thine hand, and turn me in my course. Behold, I am thy servant, ready for all things, for I desire to live not to myself, but to thee. O oh, that I might live worthily and perfectly. A prayer to be enabled to do God's will perfectly. Grant me thy grace, most merciful Jesus, that it may be with me, and work in me, and persevere with me, even unto the end. Grant that I may ever desire and wish whatsoever is most pleasing and dear unto thee. Let thy will be mine, and let my will always follow thine, and entirely accord with it. May I choose and reject whatsoever thou dost. Yea, let it be impossible for me to choose or reject, except according to thy will. Grant that I may die to all worldly things, and for thy sake love to be despised and unknown in this world. Grant unto me above all things that I can desire to rest in thee, and that in thee my heart may be at peace. Thou art the true peace of the heart, thou alone its rest. Apart from thee all things are hard and unquiet. In thee alone, the supreme and eternal God, I will lay me down in peace and take my rest. Amen. Psalm 4 verse 9 Chapter 16 that true solace is to be sought in God alone. Whatsoever I am able to desire or to think of for my solace, I look for it not here, but hereafter. For if I alone had all the solaces of this world, and were able to enjoy all its delights, it is certain that they could not endure long. Wherefore, O my soul, Thou canst be fully comforted and perfectly refreshed only in God, the comforter of the poor and the lifter up of the humble. Wait but a little while, my soul. Wait for the divine promise and thou shalt have abundance of all good things in heaven. If thou longest too inordinately for the things which are now, thou shalt lose those which are eternal and heavenly. Let temporal things be in the use, eternal things in the desire. Thou canst not be satisfied with any temporal good, 
for thou wast not created for the enjoyment of these. Although thou hadst all the good things which ever were created, yet couldst not thou be happy and blessed. All thy blessedness and thy felicity lieth in God, who created all things. Not such felicity as seemeth good to the foolish lover of the world, but such as Christ's good and faithful servants wait for, and as the spiritual and pure in heart sometimes taste, whose conservation is in heaven. Philippians 3, verse 20 All human solace is empty and short-lived. Blessed and true is that solace which is felt inwardly, springing from the truth. The godly man everywhere beareth about with him his own comforter, Jesus, and saith unto him, Be with me, Lord Jesus, always and everywhere. Let it be my comfort to be able to give up cheerfully all human comfort. And if thy consolation fail me, let thy will and righteous approval be always with me for the highest comfort. For thou wilt not always be chiding, neither keepest thou thine anger for ever. Psalm 102 verse 9 Chapter 17 That all care is to be cast upon God My son, suffer me to do with thee what I will. I know what is expedient for thee. Thou thinkest as a man. In many things thou judgest as human affection persuadeth thee. Lord, what thou sayest is true. Greater is thy care for me than all the care which I am able to take for myself. For too insecurely doth he stand who casteth not all his care upon thee. Lord, so long as my will standeth right and firm in thee, do with me what thou wilt. For whatsoever thou shalt do with me cannot be aught but good. Blessed be thou, if thou wilt leave me in darkness. Blessed also be thou, if thou wilt leave me in light. Blessed be thou, if thou vouchsafe to comfort me, and always blessed be thou, if thou cause me to be troubled. My son, even thus must thou stand, if thou desirest to walk with me. Thou must be ready alike for suffering or rejoicing. Thou must be poor and needy, as willingly as full and rich. Lord, I will willingly bear for thee whatsoever thou wilt have to come upon me. Without choice I will receive from thy hand good and evil, sweet and bitter, joy and sadness and will give thee thanks for all things which shall happen unto me. Keep me from all sin, and I will not fear death nor hell. Only cast me not away for ever, nor blot me out of the book of life. Then no tribulation which shall come upon me shall do me hurt. Chapter 18 that temporal miseries are to be borne patiently after the example of Christ. My son, I came down from heaven for thy salvation. I took upon me thy miseries, not of necessity, but drawn by love, that thou mightest learn patience, and mightest bear temporal miseries without murmuring. For from the hour of my birth, until my death upon the cross, I ceased not from bearing of sorrow. I had much lack of temporal things. I oftentimes heard many reproaches against myself. I gently bore contradictions and hard words. 
I received ingratitude for benefits, blasphemies for my miracles, rebukes for my doctrine. Lord, because Thou wast patient in Thy life, herein most of all fulfilling the commandment of Thy Father, it is well that I, miserable sinner, should patiently bear myself according to Thy will, and as long as Thou wilt have it so, should bear about with me for my salvation the burden of this corruptible life. For although the present life seemeth burdensome, it is nevertheless already made very full of merit through Thy grace, and to those who are weak it becometh easier and brighter through Thy example and the footsteps of Thy saints. But it is also much more full of consolation than it was of old, under the Old Testament, when the gate of heaven remained shut, and even the way to heaven seemed more obscure when so few cared to seek after the heavenly kingdom. But not even those who were then just and in the way of salvation were able, before thy passion and the ransom of thy holy death, to enter the kingdom of heaven. O oh, what great thanks am I bound to give thee, who hast vouchsafed to show me and all faithful people the good and right way to thine eternal kingdom. For thy way is our way, and by holy patience we walk to thee who art our crown. If thou hadst not gone before and taught us, who would care to follow? Oh, how far would they have gone backward if they had not beheld thy glorious example? Behold, we are still lukewarm, though we have heard of thy many signs and discourses. What would become of us if we had not such a light to help us follow thee? Chapter 19 Of Bearing Injuries and who shall be approved as truly patient. What sayest thou, my son? Cease to complain, consider my suffering and that of my saints. Thou hast not yet resisted unto blood. Hebrews 12, verse 4 it is little which thou sufferest, in comparison with those who have suffered so many things, have been so strongly tempted, so grievously troubled, so many wise proved and tried. Thou oughtest therefore to call to mind the more grievous sufferings of others, that thou mightest bear thy lesser ones more easily. And if they seem not to thee little, See that it is not thy impatience which is the cause of this. But whether they be little or whether they be great, study to bear them all with patience. So far as thou settest thyself to bear patiently, so far thou dost wisely and art deserving of the more merit. Thou shalt also bear the more easily if thy mind and habit are carefully trained hereunto. And say not, I cannot bear these things from such a man, nor are things of this kind to be borne by me, for he hath done me grievous harm, and imputeth to me what I had never thought. But from another I will suffer patiently such things as I see I ought to suffer. Foolish is such a thought as this, for it considereth not the virtue of patience, nor by whom that virtue is to be crowned, but it rather weigheth persons and offences against self. He is not truly patient, who will only suffer as far as seemeth right to himself, and from whom he pleaseth. But the truly patient man considereth not by what man he is tried, whether by one above him, or by an equal or inferior, 
whether by a good and holy man, or a perverse and unworthy, but indifferently from every creature, whatsoever, or how often soever, adversity happeneth to him, he gratefully accepteth all from the hand of God, and counteth it great gain. For with God nothing which is born for his sake, however small, shall lose its reward. Be thou therefore ready for the fight, if thou wilt have the victory. Without striving thou canst not win the crown of patience. If thou wilt not suffer, thou refusest to be crowned. But if thou desirest to be crowned, strive manfully, endure patiently. Without labour thou drawest not near to rest, nor without fighting comest thou to victory. Make possible to me, O Lord, by grace what seemeth impossible to me by nature. Thou knowest how little I am able to bear, and how quickly I am cast down when a like adversity riseth up against me. Whatsoever trial of tribulation may come to me, may it become unto me pleasing and acceptable. For to suffer and be vexed for thy sake is exceeding healthful to the soul. Chapter 20 Of Confession of Our Infirmity and of the Miseries of This Life I will acknowledge my sin unto thee. Psalm 32, verse 5 I will confess to thee, Lord, my infirmity. It is often a small thing which casteth me down and maketh me sad. I resolve that I will act bravely, but when a little temptation cometh, immediately I am in a great strait. Wonderfully small sometimes is the matter whence a grievous temptation cometh, and whilst I imagine myself safe for a little space, when I am not considering, I find myself often almost overcome by a little puff of wind. Behold therefore, O Lord, my humility and my frailty, which is altogether known to Thee, be merciful unto me, and draw me out of the mire that I sink not. Psalm 59, verse 16 Lest I ever remain cast down. This is what frequently throweth me backward, and confoundeth me before thee, that I am so liable to fall, so weak to resist my passions, and though their assault is not altogether according to my will, it is violent and grievous, and it altogether wearieth me to live thus daily in conflict. Herein is my infirmity made known to me, that hateful fancies always rush in far more easily than they depart. O oh, that thou, most mighty God of Israel, lover of all faithful souls, wouldst look upon the labour and sorrow of thy servant, and give him help in all things whereunto he striveth. Strengthen me with heavenly fortitude, lest the old man, this miserable flesh, not being yet fully subdued to the spirit, prevail to rule over me, against which I ought to strive so long as I remain in this most miserable life. O oh, what a life is this, where tribulations and miseries cease not, where all things are full of snares and of enemies. For when one tribulation or temptation goeth, another cometh. Yea, while the former conflict is yet raging, others come more in number and unexpected. And how can the life of man be loved, seeing that it hath so many bitter things, 
that it is subjected to so many calamities and miseries? How can it even be called life when it produces so many deaths and plagues? The world is often reproached because it is deceitful and vain, yet notwithstanding it is not easily given up, because the lusts of the flesh have too much rule over it. Some draw us to love, some to hate. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, these draw to love of the world. But the punishments and miseries which righteously follow these things bring forth hatred of the world and weariness. But, alas, an evil desire conquereth a mind given to the world, and thinketh it happiness to be under the nettles. Job 30, verse 7 Because it savoureth not, nor perceiveth the sweetness of God, nor the inward gracefulness of virtue. But they who perfectly despise the world, and strive to live unto God in holy discipline, these are not ignorant of the divine sweetness promised to all, who truly deny themselves, and see clearly how grievously the world erreth, and in how many ways it is deceived. End of Book 3, Chapter 20